now welcome to the selenium training what we will be starting off is initially we will be looking at java right now most of the people what they do is that when they go forward and uh, when they go forward and learn selenium they tend to skip java language okay they directly try to jump over to web driver and learn directly start writing selenium code and all which actually becomes very tough for them and they end up losing their interest okay java is the background for learning selenium right so before i start over with the course i'll give you a brief background about selenium that what selenium is right how did it evolve a period over a period of time where it is and where it will be going right so selenium is not a new tool only thing is it got famous over a period of time because it's open source right otherwise like i worked on it for the first time in 2007 fine now earlier when selenium was started in the market uh, there were three components right these were the three components in selenium hold on one was known as selenium rc one is still there it's known as ide and one is grid okay now what happened was this was way back in 2007 6 8 right and in 2011 right something came up over here known as web driver right and grid 2 fine and now this is 2013 and i have started to hear that somewhere in end of 2013 and 2014 we will be having something known as it's still under development selenium 3 okay it's not it's not released as of now but work is going on on it right so i'll explain you the these various components first and then i'll start with the course look primarily ev every tester just hold on uh, guys i request you to keep yourself on mute right if you have to ask any question you can unmute yourself and ask or you can scroll your mouse to the top and use webex chat you can also re reach me on skype my skype id is same as the website name that is qtp selenium okay right now rc right uh, rc id and grid these were the initial components right selenium was initially made by a company known as thoughtworks it's rather it is still existing and it was made for its own testing purpose right now ide was the initial one which everybody started using because it was very easy to use right it is, it installs as a add on in mozilla and only problem is that it only works on mozilla it is only record play tool right and for example no reports are generated in this tool or something like that so it's basically a record and run tool which only works on mozilla ide right but still many people uh, use it because it's uh, it's easy to use that's the main reason right but if you have a website which has to be tested on multiple uh, browsers for example i Mo mozilla chrome safari and all so for that we had rc right so rc had support for multiple browsers fine along with that rc utilized multiple languages as well for example selenium rc it is still there some some companies they still use it uh, it's it can be implemented in java it can be implemented in c sharp ruby python fine so there are various languages uh, php perl fine but it got famous with only java and c sharp ruby and python are also used but most of the companies out there in the industry they are using java because java is open source language and all right grid is something which is helpful in running your test cases parallelly across multiple machines in grid we distribute the test cases among various nodes there is a central uh, controlling entity known as hub the hub controls the nodes and the tests they are executed on the nodes fine so these were the initial three components 
IDE, if you have a big project, you cannot use it, right? So people started using RC for their projects. They tested the websites on multiple browsers. They primarily used Java language and then implemented Grid in which they could run the test cases parallelly. Fine, but practically RC had lot of drawbacks. Giving you a very simple drawback of RC. In RC, there used to be a server, right? To start that server, you had to open up the command prompt, start it, and then start working on it. Fine. At times, there were needs that you had to restart the server or something, and the server never used to get restarted. So what used to happen was that uh, you actually ended up restarting your machine or logging off from your machine, logging in again and restarting the RC server, right? So this was one of the primary issues, okay? So that's why things evolved into something known as WebDriver. WebDriver is also known as Selenium 2.0, fine? Like RC, it also supports multiple browsers. It supports four major, major languages, Java, C Sharp, Ruby and Python, fine? And it is far better than RC. This doesn't mean that if you have to learn WebDriver, which we will be learning in our uh, training, right? You need to learn RC. RC is the older technology. If you are new, you can still skip it, right? There is no need to learn RC. You can directly learn WebDriver. Both of them are very different. Okay, don't think that WebDriver is dependent on RC. No, it is not. People who have worked on RC, when they look at the WebDriver code, they are not able to understand it, right? Both of them are completely different. It's just like two different tools. Okay. Grid got ev uh, evolved into Grid 2. Grid 2 was supporting WebDriver. Find the support for WebDriver was there in Grid 2. And uh, Grid, obviously RC is also there. So Grid 2 is again used to run the test cases parallelly to save time, effort. Okay. And now something in market is coming over which is Selenium 3. I am not sure what new things will they be coming over in it. Perhaps I am keeping, uh, like I am expecting something better to come up on mobile based testing or something. Right? So, right? Fine. I hope everybody has a very clear concept on how, se how Selenium evolved over a period of time. Right? So now, the biggest mistake which people they do is that, they want to learn Selenium fine, but they directly jump over to WebDriver and then they start learning it. No, this is not the way. You should first clear the concepts of Java and then learn it. Fine. Like for example, you, you guys, when you when you were learning Selenium or when you tried to learn it, right? You also might have faced very various issues or something, right? And you might have faced the issue that there is no documentation available on Selenium, right? Okay, the documentation is there. Okay, if you go to the website, the official website of Selenium, that is seleniumhq.org, then you will observe that under the download section over here, right, you go to the download section and you will see a link over here called as javadoc, right. You click on that javadoc link and this page will open up. Okay, this is the official documentation of Selenium. Look, you will not be able to understand this if you don't know Java, if you don't know the concepts of object-oriented programming. Right, some people, they say that fine, I have a little knowledge of Java and all and I can do it. Little knowledge will take you nowhere. Okay, it's pure Java programming, nothing else. Right, so we'll start with Java and what we'll be doing in this course is I'll be taking over the concepts of Java and I'll be taking over the concepts of Selenium parallelly. Okay, learning this tool is not something which can be achieved in a matter of 10 days to 20 days, right? It, it cannot be done. Learning can be done in 10, 20 days, but if you have to learn it to a level which is required in the industry, right, to build up an end-to-end automation framework or something, it takes around two months of regular practice. Okay, if you want to clear up an interview or something, it will take time. Don't expect fast results from this tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that, first of all, I'm going to jump over to Java language. 
right now first of all you need to install java and i hope everybody has java installed on their machines right all you need to do is that you need to go to google and uh, just type download java and you'll get the first link right install it from here okay now another important thing is that in case you are using a 64 bit machine okay because these days almost all the machines which are coming up are 64 bit right you need to install jdk as well in those machines because at times eclipse never works i'll talk about eclipse in some time but you have to download and install jdk in 64 bit machines as well so you, this is the first link you click on this link and this will take you over to the java download page over here you will see three types of downloads jdk server jre and jre you need to install this jdk okay you need to download and install this one please download and install jdk in case you are having a 64 bit machine fine right fine arsenal uh, arsenal i'll add you on my skype all right so now if you have jdk installed and all everything now what you need to do is that you need to install eclipse eclipse is editor for java language for e for example if you have uh, seen um just one minute guys so r right now out here uh, you need to install eclipse eclipse is editor for java language like in c language you have turbo c or something the place where you write your code fine you can download eclipse uh, just need to go to google and type download eclipse right you will get, get eclipse downloads over here just go to this link and you need to download say eclipse id for java ee developer uh, depending on your version that is 32 bit window or 64 bit windows you can download this okay now once you have it installed not installed but basically downloaded eclipse comes as a bundle fine it's not something uh, which is installed on your machine it will come as a bundle when you ex extract the zip file which you have installed you will see hold on a folder like this eclipse fine all right now if you open up this folder you will see eclipse.exe file you double click on it and start up eclipse okay i think somebody is pinging me Shiva. Okay. Right. Yeah. When you start up Eclipse, you get a message workspace launcher like this. Okay. This workspace launcher points towards the location where all the code will be stored when you uh, actually work. Uh, sorry, the the place where you where you will be storing all your projects and code. That that that's the path, right? Out, out here, I'll give the path as say our batch is October weekend. Fine. So we whatever coding we do, whatever projects we made, we will store those projects in this particular location, right? So I'll just click on OK and let Eclipse open up. Right? Learning Java is very very important. You just can't ignore it you just can't run away from it i've seen people getting scared from programming language having a fear in them look if you are into testing and if you are if you don't want to do programming then it's tough because testing is just not about manual testing there are so many things coming up these days this is just selenium then there is web services then there are lots and lots of other things so you know it's not something which you can get away with you have to learn and moreover if you learn java language then it becomes very easy to learn selenium it also becomes very easy to learn a tool like jmeter or if you want to learn soap ui web services testing then also it becomes very easy so java is just will just not help you with selenium but you can jump over to other tools as well okay so anyways this is eclipse it got started up and out here in the central portion we will be writing the code 
on the left side this is tem practically known as a package explorer we will be storing the projects and at the bottom we will be getting the outputs okay this is the rough usage fine now what i'll do is i'll right click over here create a new project fine right click in the white space create a new project and from here under java select a java project i'm going to make a small project click on next and give the project name as say day 1 hold on right so this is a day 1 project hold on yeah so if you look on the package explorer on the left side this is your project and if if you expand it you will see a source folder under it and jre system library jre system library is actually java which was installed on your system right i'll talk about this as well and then there is a source folder which is which will have all the java code which is there inside the project okay so uh, whatever java code you you make you will make it in the source folder right practically if you look at this uh, hold on i'll tell you uh, under the source folder you have to make the java files right you right click select new and select class from here okay in the class you can write over here say test fine and select this checkbox public static void main fine and click on finish button hold on so you have this code auto generated hold on i'll just increase the font size which will be visible to everyone i hope this font is visible to everyone right so this is uh, what test.java looks like fine it's got a function known as the public static void main function some brackets okay now what is static what is public what is void we'll do all these things fine just be with me in order to explain you the concept of static in order to explain you the concept of public i need to explain you modifiers or object oriented programming in java language so for time being just accept this language as it is and as you proceed with the course you will come to know what it is right in a nutshell what the what this code does is that this is the class public class test the name of the class test out here there's a rule in java that the name of the class that is test has to be same as the name of the java file okay if i give another name i'll instantly get an error in eclipse okay and in eclipse there is a feature like if you are getting an error you don't need to worry you just move your mouse over the error and eclipse will give you fixes when i move my mouse over this error eclipse automatically gives me two fixes that either change the java file name or change the class name whatever it is okay so whenever you get an error always remember just move your mouse over the error and you'll get the description of the error as well all right the name of the class has to be same as name of the file now what is this public static void main inside this class this is known as a function and look like in c language if you have studied c language main is the function in which the control comes up for the first time right similarly in java as well main is the function in which the control comes up for the first time when you execute the file okay for example in this file i write system.out.println learn selenium system.out.println is actually the command to print something in java language okay uh, the shortcut for this is you just type syso and hit control plus space bar all right uh, and if you run this project if you run this file you run this through this button on the top this small button okay you just uh, click on this button and it will print learn okay now guys 
for this course okay for this course uh, what i am expecting from you is that at least you guys have a basic programming knowledge that is you guys know what variables are what functions are okay for example uh, every programming language has a int variable int i equals to 100 it will be a number then there is a string something like a uh, string x equals to hello world then it will be a string okay fine so every programming language has these kinds of things and i am assuming that you know these basic things all right similarly uh, for storing decimals there is double double d equals to some number dot the decimal part fine and you know what functions and all 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 that stuff is if you don't know then you can go to my website qtpselenium.com and you can have a look at the first two training modules training video 1 and training video 2 they are free they are open to everyone you can have a look at them they will give you a very good idea on what i am talking about right now because i just can't focus on these small things in the class right i have to start with the object oriented programming and other stuff okay so i am assuming that you you know all these things if you don't know these things then there is nothing to worry you can have a look at these recorded sessions as well right and um look what i suggest people is that if you really want to learn selenium from me then and if you if you are a type of guy who is not so comfortable with programming or something then buy the recorded sessions first get the access to them learn from them get some background and then join the training you don't need to pay the full fee for the training you just need to pay the remaining fee okay you just need to pay the remaining fee you don't need to pay the full fee again right so now anyways let's move further on okay so this was the test class which had created this is the main function and i, I wrote just learning selenium inside it okay practically what happens right if i'll show you if you right click on the project day 1 hold on it's not right clicking just a minute just a minute my eclipse has hanged yeah if you right click and go to the properties okay you will see that uh, you will get a window like this right resource java build path and all everything right you go to java build path you will get we will be using this a lot you will be will be using resource a lot during the training so right click properties gives the complete set of properties for the project which we will be using fine for example under the resource property you get the path where the project is lying on the hard disk right you copy this path and go to the physical location of this project and what you will get is you will get the, these files out here dot settings bin source class path dot project all these files okay and source folder which is out here is also visible inside eclipse rest all of them are not visible but source folder is visible and inside the source folder there is test.java file which i had created it's present over here okay right and along with the source folder there is a bin folder if you open the bin folder you'll see a file known as test.class file class file is something like um every java file is converted to a class file at compile time when you compile a, and run your project the java file gets converted to a class file every java file for example in my source folder if i create a new class over here call it as sample.java click on public static void main and i get a file like this sample.java inside sample.java i just write system.out.println 
I just print hello world and when you run this it prints hello world and if you look at the structure inside the bin you will have the sample dot class file generated this class file is just like an exe file you can deploy it on any operating system windows linux unix you deploy it on any operating system and this class file will execute okay it's like an exe file and the best part is if you open it you your source code is not revealed so when you have to deliver a client you deliver the client the class files you don't give him the java files you give him the class files and he executes the class files okay so now what i'm trying to tell you out here is that every java file which you create gets converted to a class file and you deliver the client the class file all right now suppose you are making in a you are working in a project fine you are working in a project just hold on join again or check your speakers okay now suppose you are working on a project right in that uh, particular project you end up making lot of java files so corresponding to all these java files there will be one class file okay and suppose you have to you end up making say 2000 java files it is possible right and corresponding to 2000 java files you will have 2000 class files and you have to deliver all these 2000 class files to the client fine how will you do it the common sense will tell us that fine we'll put all these class files into a single file uh, called as a zip file and we will zip the files and send it to the client fine in java we don't make a zip file rather we make a file known as jar file many of you might have heard this word jar file is nothing but collection of various class files inside a jar file lot of class files are present lot of executable class files all you need to do is that you need to put you need to take this jar and use it if you are a client if you are a client you'll take one file jar file and use it okay for example giving you a practical example when uh, selenium was installed it's not not selenium sorry when java was installed on your system okay uh, then this is what we got in eclipse jre system library is actually java which was installed on your system so what do we get when we install java we don't get anything but we get some class files if you expand sorry jar files if you expand this you will see number of jar files each jar over here will have many class files inside it and we use these class files for example if i write over here system.out.println new date date is a internal class in java right what is new date meaning just forget about that right now don't concentrate on it but i'm using a date class which is present somewhere in this jar files right and when you run this uh hold on when you run this it prints the current date time and all everything okay so sample dot java class is something which is using the date class which is internal in java language right where is the date class referred from over here it is referred from one of the jar files okay so this is what a jar file is jar file is something in which you have got multiple class files and you can use them why am i teaching you about jar file out here is because when you work with selenium you get the selenium jar files into eclipse selenium is not installed i am talking about web driver over here all right selenium web driver is not installed if you go to selenium hq.org website right 
and you go to this hold on seleniumhq.org and you go to the download section over here right you will see the download link in front of java over here the right now the version is 2.35 okay when you click on this download link what happens is that in your pc uh just hold on yeah you get this folder in this folder you get these two jar files 2.35.jar okay along with it there are multiple jars under the library folder okay so you get all these jar files in your system these are the selenium jar files when you download selenium you need to put these jar files into eclipse you need to import these jar files in eclipse so that you can use the existing selenium classes inside eclipse for example i was using the ex existing date class of java language in eclipse over here right date class was coming from this jre system library but selenium has got its own set of classes which we can import all right so how do we do that in just one minute somebody is pinging me uh, not show sure. sure yeah hi krishna uh, hold on yeah so now what i'll do is i'll right click on my project go to the properties of the project this is very important and we will be using it at times fine yeah sita i am recording the session right you right click on that project go to the properties and you go to java build path option over here fine in the java build path option out here you will have four tabs go to the libraries tab right and click on the button over here add external jars fine and you navigate to the place where you have stored the jars hold on Yeah, 2.35 is out here under libs as well. Fine. So I have added the jars and they come up in a section known as reference libraries. If you don't see the reference libraries coming up, like sometimes people see something like this. All the jars are listed over here. There is a prospective change in Eclipse. Out here in Eclipse, you will see that. there is a just hold on this icon is there okay you need to click on this icon and switch over to the java perspective when you switch over to the java perspective you will see the reference library section over here we when working with selenium we work with the core java perspective right so the core java perspective you switch over to it you will get it in the reference libraries you expand this and you will have the selenium jars with you okay now how do you work with these jars to work with these jars to understand the contents of these jars and the classes of these jars you need to know the concept of object oriented programming in java language if you directly start over with them you will be successful but you, if you are stuck you will be stuck very badly all right fine so any questions from anybody so far anybody having any questions regarding the course regarding java regarding configuring selenium this is how you configure selenium i just configured selenium in my project over here you don't install selenium you configure selenium all right and this is how you configure selenium so any questions from anybody any questions till now yes shekhar
which browser are you talking about i look i is i gives you problems at times i have also seen that okay so there are various workarounds for various problems okay but for as far as my knowledge goes chrome and mozilla they are very stable Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. Yes, in coming sessions, I'll tell you about browser, multiple browsers. Right? Fine. So another question being asked by Golam is, um, is it good enough Java in your free video? Look, uh, if you look at the free videos on the website, then the first three videos of Java are free. Yes, good enough information is there. But for Java, actually, there are total seven modules. Out of which I have kept three, three of them. You don't have access to four. Rest of the four, so you will have partial knowledge if you watch the first three. And all the seven modules of Java on the site, they cover enough Java which can help you to easily learn Selenium. Okay, please do let me know if you can provide the instructions to configure Selenium. I had problems joining early, missed the Selenium. Yeah, it's quite easy, Raj. Now all you need to do is that. You need to go to this link. I'll give you the link on WebEx chat to everyone. This is the link seleniumhq.org. You need to download the jars, Java jars from here, and then you need to go to Eclipse. My this day one prop the properties of your project. Go to Java build path. Click on add external jars and add the jars which you have downloaded. Okay, I am recording the session. I'll also give you the recorded session. When you get the recorded session, that will make the stuff very easy. Yes, you will get the recorded session after the class. I will be emailing you. Right? So it will it takes a little while to convert and upload on YouTube. So you have to be a little bit patient. Fine. Any other question from anybody? How did you get the reference libraries? Yeah, uh, again, fine. Yeah, many of you might not get this reference libraries. As I told you earlier, you might be in the wrong perspective. There are various perspectives in Eclipse which are visible over here when you click on this small icon. Make sure that you are in the Java perspective. You can go to other and select the Java perspective from here. If you select Java perspective, you'll get this thing. Okay. Yes, I will be uploading this video on YouTube, and I will upload it. I'll send it to you so that you can watch it off the record as well. Okay. Uh, Viral is asking a question: How realistic are application testing? They are very realistic. That's why Selenium is used. It's used for uh, uh, functional testing of the web applications, right? So it's actually very practical tool, and it's quite realistic. Okay. So, oh, you may meant the course. How will we be look in the course? As I told you in the beginning, I will be concentrating on Java and WebDriver. Okay, when I actually start with the JUnit and TestNG framework, and then I move over to data-driven framework or like a keyword-driven framework, then you will actually see the realistic testing. Okay, now that's the mistake which people do. They tend to start from the bottom. They concentrate on the framework. They, I know everybody in this training has got experience. Many of you might having might be having five, six, seven, eight years of experience, and you are at a level where you directly see the end product, right? How am I going to use this in in my own project? Look, don't. Try to find the answer of this question right now. Right now, the question is, how will you learn Java language? Okay, learn. Start from the basics, and then you, when you reach this point, you'll automatically come to know what you have to do. Things will start falling into the places.
can we use selenium for virtualization testing no selenium is only for web based automation right selenium cannot test your desktop based products selenium cannot test your mobile application selenium cannot do that selenium can test your only only browsers it can test the websites in mobile as well it can test the websites in a pc as well right only restricted to mobile applications okay so hold on it started yeah you will get the recorded session right so now okay now the next thing which uh, just hold on right so the next thing which we will be looking at over here is the concept of object oriented programming fine so let's start with the concept of object oriented programming after teaching you this i'll come over to selenium and i'll tell you how this object oriented programming is used practically